Hello everyone, I'm Koji Nuida from Kyushu University and AISD. Today I explain a research result on what may happen when we use cryptographic pseudorandom generators to implement cryptographic schemes. Cryptographic schemes are expected to have nice properties such as security and correctness, and its theoretical design supposes to use true randomness. But it is expensive to implement the true randomness in practice, so the use of cryptographic PRG is usually recommended. And we expect that the scheme still has a nice property when the PRG is used. However, actually, my results show that this picture is not true in general. As far as I found, the only result of such a kind in the literature is Crypto 2011 paper by Barak et al., where the authors mentioned that the computational security of randomness extractors can be lost by using PRG. My result extends such possibility to the case of multiparty computation and public key encryption. MPC and PKE are quite fundamental, so I expect that similar situations might be found more widely in cryptography. We have two parts in this presentation. First, we consider the case of MPC. First, I briefly explain the MPC itself. Let us suppose that multiple parties have their own inputs and they want to know some property for the whole of the party's inputs. By using MPC, we will be able to extract such information on the whole of the parties without knowing each party's input itself. Nowadays, MPC is not just a theoretical topic. Many practical applications of MPC are also expected. This is a rough picture of two-party computation in the semi-honest model. Both parties have their inputs, they communicate with each other, and finally they derive their own outputs. Here we suppose that the first party P1 is corrupted by an adversary. And an important point for today's talk is that both parties also use their internal randomness, which is usually assumed to be ideally random. In order to formulate the security, we compare this picture with the ideal situation for two-party computation. In the ideal case, there is a trusted third party between the two parties, who is given the party's inputs and just returns the output to the parties. Now in the real situation, the corrupted party, P1, had some additional objects indicated by red circles. These objects should be simulated in the security proof. And the important point is that P1's randomness is also included in the object to be simulated. This is our picture when a PLG is used to implement P1's randomness. It is important that now the random seed of the PLG is included in what the simulator has to simulate in the security proof. This is intuitively reasonable because when the party is corrupted in practice, the adversary can view the party's device in which the seed is recorded. Therefore, any information may not be leaked from the random seed. For the difference between the cases of true randomness and PRG, the main observation is that using PRG instead of true randomness is seemingly small but certainly a modification of the original protocol. On the other hand, 
The semi honest model supposes that the part is perfectly follows the original protocol itself. Therefore, in theory, it might happen that security of the original protocol in the semi honest model does not guarantee the security after using PRG. Indeed, one of the main results today is giving, as a counterexample, a pair of a two-party protocol and a PLG. Both are secure individually, but it becomes not secure when combined. I think that the essential reason behind such a counterexample is the security notion of MPC where the random seed is visible by the adversary. This is a stronger situation than the security notion for PLG where the distinguisher cannot view the random seed. Therefore, it is not a contradiction that the security of PLG does not guarantee the security of MPC. I gave two counterexamples but today I explain about the second result only. The protocol is chosen from the literature. It is the oblivious transfer protocol by Asheroff et al. in 2013. I skip the detail, but the point is that a receiver in the OT protocol is supposed to randomly sample a group element in a certain tricky way to ensure the security. Now, our PRG is designed in a way that it cancels the tricky sampling and makes it a straightforward sampling, therefore, the security is lost. We note that the computational assumptions for the two counterexamples are non-standard ones. One of the future research topics is to improve this point. Let me show a story to emphasize a practical importance of such a counterexample. There are a user of a crypto system, a cryptographer who designs a crypto system, and an engineer who implements the crypto system. The engineer is honest, so he properly used a cryptographic PRG in the implementation. But one day, the user told the engineer to claim that the implemented system is not secure. The engineer is quite surprised and he asked the cryptographer about the situation. Then the cryptographer said, my protocol has security proof. Did you implement it correctly? And he also said, my security proof supposes using ideal randomness so that even using cryptographically secure PLG is not following the protocol specification. Therefore, you are responsible for the insecurity. But of course, such a claim to use ideal randomness in implementation is quite infeasible in practice. So it's not reasonable from the engineer's standpoint. In order to save the engineer, I also gave a sufficient condition for a protocol under PLG to guarantee the security when combined. This result is actually not very strong, so I skip the detail. It is also a future research topic to improve such a sufficient condition for guaranteeing the security. From now, we move to the second topic, the correctness for PKE. Before discussing the correctness, I start with a well-known observation that security of PKE is preserved when a cryptographically secure PLG is used in key generation or encryption. Here we consider the IndoCPA security. This is a picture of the IndoCPA game between the challenger at the left side and the adversary at the right side. 
In this case, the essential point is that the plain text to be encrypted are chosen by a probabilistic polynomial time algorithm by the adversary. Now, when the randomness for key generation is replaced with a PRG, the whole situation surrounded by red lines can be described as a PPT algorithm. Therefore, the security of the PRG guarantees the security of the implemented scheme. And the same holds for the case of encryption. Okay, we move to the case of correctness. I note that the correctness notion here is considering non-zero but negligible decryption error probability. If the error probability is zero, then of course the use of PRG doesn't compromise the correctness. This is an analogous picture for the correctness. The essential difference from the case of security is that now the correctness is usually modeled to satisfy for any plaintext, where no condition for efficiency to sample the plaintext is explicitly stated. Accordingly, when considering that the randomness for encryption is replaced with a PRG, now in general the whole situation cannot be modeled as a uniform PPT algorithm. And I indeed gave a counter example in this situation. I skip the detail of the example today. It is interesting that now the difference between uniform PPT algorithms and non-uniform PPT algorithms matters, which would be not so obvious from the definition of the correctness. I will give some explanation later. Similar thing happens when considering the randomness in key generation. I also skip the detail, but emphasize that now even a PRG secure against non-uniform distinguishers is not sufficient for guaranteeing the correctness. At the end of my presentation, I give an intuitive explanation of why the difference between uniform and non-uniform algorithms is relevant to the case of encryption, but is not to the case of key generation. I show something like a logical formula expressing the case that a PKE scheme is not correct. Here, the data mark means that the following condition is satisfied with high probability when the current object is randomly chosen. When a PRG is applied to encryption, this affects a part of the logical formula inside the choice of plain text. In this case, we may focus on only a single plain text appearing in the formula and a non-uniform algorithm can have the unique target plaintext as advice. On the other hand, when a PRG is applied to key generation, this affects a part of the logical formula outside the choice of plaintext. In this case, the choice of plaintext may depend on the key pairs, and it is possible that the dependency cannot be described even by using non-uniform PPT algorithms. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone again. It's my mistake that my video is too shorter than 20 minutes. So I add some slides showing the, some frequently asked questions for my research result and also my answers to the questions. The first question here is about whether such a counterexample for the case of two-party computations is found from the practical schemes. Actually, I expect that 
natural schemes would not have not uh, cause such a problem. But actually, to ensure that we need some definition of the natural scheme, and it would be uh, also a future research topic. The second question here is about the relation between our result regarding the pseudo-random generator or the classical result of Canetti Goldlei Halleby about the impossibility of implementation of random oracle by using the uh, concrete hash functions. Actually, these are somehow similar results, but we have some strengths and weakness in contrast to the, the previous result. The third question here is whether such a loss of correctness by using PLG can happen for practical PK schemes. My feeling is that for most of the existing PK schemes in the literature, we can prove that any cryptographically secure PLE, PLG preserves the correctness of the scheme. But we need individual argument for each scheme. That's my feeling. The final question here is that it seems somehow natural to define the correctness of PKE by assuming that the plain text should be sampled efficiently by using the PPT algorithm. I think that um, that would be a possible option, but but it seems that such a definition with the condition of the efficient sampleability of plain text seems not a standard definition at the present. That's all. Thank you for your attention again.